You're at the high nibble for the more significant bits. In this video, we're going to look at the Virtual Line Printer, or LPT device. I'm particularly happy with how this virtual device turned out because it wasn't a matter of porting somebody else's code. It wasn't a matter of using a big library and incorporating that into the uh, desktop UI. This was something that I made myself from scratch. In the past video, we had a look at the uh, TTY device or serially connected terminal, and we'll boot into CPM now in that terminal and quickly remember how we can type out a large program listing. And compared to a terminal of the day, the TTY device in the desktop UI does give us a, a large uh, scroll history so we can look back through the program listing. But that doesn't remove the fact that we have to be at the command prompt to do anything new. And if we're in a text editor, that scroll history wouldn't be so useful. So I decided it would be a great addition to the desktop UI to have a virtual line printer. So we'll open it now. And you'll notice that the virtual line printer opens in a new tab in the browser. It's not another window on the desktop. You'll also notice that it's currently full of text. Uh, and that was the output produced in the last session, which remains buffered in a file on the SD card uh, attached to the microcontroller. So the whole uh, line printer user interface has been made to look like the PDF viewer that you get built into the Chrome browser. So you'll see the widgets down in the bottom right hand corner here. And uh, obviously we can scroll through everything that's been printed to the line printer. And I've added this little red finger pointer here just to show you where the print head is currently sitting. So a quick walkthrough of the button controls. First of all, we can take the line printer offline, which effectively disconnects it from its web socket. So any further printing uh, will be buffered to the text file on the SD card, but won't appear here in the user interface. Put it online, it reconnects the web socket. Uh, we can do a full page advance and it uh, moves 66 lines forward. So it's a little bit dumb, uh, just like a line printer of the era. The form feed button just moves up a full page, not to the next available page. There's a single line feed button. Uh, you'll notice the paper's advancing one line at a time. Now the next button I showed in the desktop UI overview, uh, the current paper style we're looking at is the, the, the standard blue line that we would have here in Australia, and I know is used in the UK as well. But a little bit of research showed me that this wasn't the prevalent paper type in the US, even though the blue bar is still American uh, letter size, as all um, 80 column sprocket fed printer paper was in the day. So this uh, command button here cycles through the three available paper styles. So here we have the uh, regular green bar that was prevalent in the US. And you can also change to a plain white uh, paper, which just still includes the sprocket holes. Um, and that would be, of course, something you would use if you were doing uh, you know, some refined word processing and didn't want um, the ugly blue line or, or uh, green bar background. The next button will reset the printer. Um, I'm going to change back to blue bar so we can see the, the line advances. Um, so now that's cleared the printer buffer and should have cleared the printer file on the SD card. And so now we're at the top of a new page and you'll see when the print heads uh, reset uh, accurately to the top of page, a page feed or form feed will actually take you to the top of the next page and you can see the little print head uh, indicator has moved down here to the top of the next page. Let's just quickly reset again. Um, the final buttons are to just bring up the standard uh, browser print dialog. So yes, you can send uh, your prints to the to your attached printer, whatever type that is, bubble jet or laser printer. Um, there's a little bit of fiddling around with the uh, uh, sizing and dimensions and to indicate whether you want to um, continue to have uh, the background images shown or just print on plain white. Uh, it probably works a lot easier for people who are using US legal paper sizes. For those of us with A4, 
takes a little bit of adjusting at the margins to get it, uh, it to get it to fit accurately one page in the virtual printer to one page on your printer. And the final button will just close the printer, but we won't do that for now. Now, when I previously demonstrated the printer, I was flicking backward and forward between the desktop UI and the printer. But what's really handy is that both Mac OS X and Windows uh, 10 allow for um, splitting the screen. And so if we detach the two panels into separate browser windows and go full screen, we can have a side-by-side -side setup with the desktop and the printer. So the standard way of redirecting output to the printer in CPM was to issue a control P at the keyboard on the console. I'll do that now. And when I type DIR to get a directory listing, listing you can see that's directed to the printer as well. Turn another control P to turn the redirect off. And this time we'll output uh, a program listing. Oops, I was about to type that and that would only show up on the console. Instead, I need to use the pip command. And we can see that that file is in fact sent to the virtual line printer. So we can scroll back through that and we could be in a text editor in the console and now we can you know, do both things, edit a file and scroll back through a program listing and see what changes we're looking for. Some of the finer points of the line printer. First of all, it is a fairly dumb line printer. It just outputs um, ASCII. It doesn't uh, respond to any control codes at this stage. So it's not equivalent to something like an M Epson MX80. Um, you can't even do a bold or an italic at this stage, but they're things that could be added down the track. Um, one nice thing is that the paper style and all the um, extra decorations like the control buttons on the side here uh, don't interfere with the plain text that's displayed in the virtual line printer. So we can use standard keyboard commands or the mouse to highlight and select text, or I can do a control or command A to select all the text, and that way it can be easily cut and paste into a regular text editor. One final little detail that I like very much is uh, I prepared the, um, the paper stock backgrounds in a vector graphics package, and they are just SVG files that the web service serves up. The sprocket holes are not, in fact, circles. They're, I think, 20-point stars, which is how they were when, when sprocket paper was manufactured, to give a little bit of grip on the sprocket feed. So I've kept that uh, true to form there. So that's been a quick overview of the line printer, virtual line printer device for the IMSA 8080 replica desktop user interface. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have and you want to see more of these videos as they come out, please press subscribe uh, and join the channel so that you can be notified when new videos are released.